What's up guys, it's Emperor Luku, and I just want to give a little warning before my video starts that I'm using OBS Ninja, which allows me to use my phone as my webcam. Um, if you have any questions to that, feel free to mention that in the comments below and I'll answer that. But you may notice I have to clip my videos a little bit and combine them because my phone cannot handle being my um, webcam. And I can't afford a good webcam. So I hope that doesn't bother you. The rest of the video is awesome, spectacular, the gaming you know, the rest of using regular OBS is smooth. So um, I just wanted to give that little warning and I hope you enjoy my video. What's up guys, it's Emperor Lu Ku with your tips, tricks, and strategies for all your strategy game needs. And today we're gonna to be talking about Warhammer 1 and 2. A lot of these things are also going to apply to pretty much any Total War game. But because though these tend to be the most popular in the competitive world that I know of, uh, this is what I'm going to focus on. And I have Warhammer 2 up on my screen, and I have a little list here in front of me. So you may see me looking at this list. This is my very first video. I got a lot of information. Um, so I hope you guys like it. Now I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, number one thing you need to know before playing any campaign uh, that is or even playing with a friend online is pay attention to what difficulty you're playing as because that is going to cause different penalties and i'm going to post a link in the description below of a breakdown of that um, someone already had did a whole breakdown and posted it in a steam um, forum so that pretty much covers everything in that subject and i'm there's just so much to cover that it'd just be easier to get that information to you guys that way um but I see a lot of people complain about getting confederations with people and getting treaties with people and I'm going to show you many things that may be the reason why. Um, number one, you may have simply have an aversion. If I go over the Dark Elves right now, you'll see that they just have a natural aversion to me, which is negative 40. And depending on what difficulty you play as, that aversion may go up or down. Um, and depending on what faction you are and what faction you're looking at, as the high elves this aversion may be a little bit high el higher because they're mortal em enemies um, and that is something that you really usually can't do much about um, aversion can be over a bunch of different reasons but if you also look where it says they condemn uh, I have treaties with people they don't like and things of that nature and that happens if somebody just already has an aversion to somebody or doesn't like or mortal em enemies of a faction or is already at war with a faction and you're doing things with that faction as far as treaties that stuff will appear there as well now a lot of people already may know that stuff but um depending on who you form trees with again that's going to show right there and what you know what they condemn and what they approve of that also can you know do a positive impact if you have a treaty with somebody that another faction likes that's going to show i'm going to see if i could try to at find something right now uh, yep yeah, see it says uh treaties with factions that they like and at war with specific factions they don't like you can see that uh, the relationship is friendly it's actually surprisingly not improving normally at the bottom it'll show you if it's improving going up or down um so that's something you need to pay attention to, but there are some things that people miss, and one of those is trespassing. And I went through all my gameplays and I couldn't find anything of me doing this, but if you trespass, like right now, I don't have a, uh, a specific relation with them, and if I Your were to go right command. now over to their territory, of the and faith. I don't have anything with them, I'm just going to do that now, okay? Um, normally something will pop up right here that says that I'm trespassing and then if I were to go into my uh, wisdom away things normally down here yep see it says it right here trespassing against order of lore master so that is gonna be here and they also have a treaty with the new world colony the so if I key. click on them normally right there see it says trespassing against so if you trespass against somebody and they have an ally it affects the ally too this also obviously affects rating um, so there is that situation as well uh, a lot of people also don't know this releasing captives if you release captives the mortal enemy of that faction that you release captives of is not going to be happy and you're going to also see that in the attitude um, section when you're clicking on diplomacy dip yeah the diplomatic uh, bar here um, another thing that 
people don't pay attention to, I see a lot of people ask questions about army composition, and that not only depends on the faction, obviously the faction is just going to have certain units that you're going to want to pay attention to, but a lot of people don't realize you need to stay to whatever the lore is of that faction. Now, if I go right up in the top right, this is Warhammer 2. It's going to be different. I believe it's down here in Warhammer 1, but I click on this and I go into faction effects. If I go down here, it says my upkeep is negative 70% for huntsmen and archers. So this faction, I'm going to want to utilize huntsmen and archers for that reason. Um, it'd be better if it, they had like, you know, bonuses to attack and defense but that's probably going to be under specific lords but your faction may have something specific to um that uh um unit so it's best to just kind of make sure that whatever that faction effect is to kind of stick with that or be around that and you can also pay attention to um not just these faction bonuses but you can also check of course the lord skills and if i go here and i go into this lord skills most regular lords is going to have things like this this first one's going to be melee defense this is usually missile strength and so on and so forth so you know for that particular lord it may be beneficial to get flagellant especially this lord because he is a um arch lector and if i go right up here bam um I've got speed and stuff that, that works with the flagellants, and um, I think there's something else up here that goes with the flagellants, I don't know, somewhere. But um, that means this particular lord, it may be beneficial to go with flagellants and some other units mixed in. Now I normally like to keep a little bit of everything, something for armor piercing, anti-large, whatever the case may be, um, you do want to kind of do that anyways, but the beef and broccoli of your um, unit composition normally should go based on the skills plus research obviously if I go into the research bar here and I go to my missiles we already talked about huntsmen they get bonuses here um, you're gonna see the huntsman there um, you're gonna see the huntsman here and guess what no oh, you're not gonna see the huntsman there so I got too carried away but these three um, th um, uh, researches are in the technology tab are all going to affect huntsmen this is going to give me more of a reason to pick the huntsman and you're normally going to see that when you compare units and I'm going to show you how to do that right now actually if I go right now actually I'll do this I'll go over here and do it this way so if I click on a unit and this takes into effect the unit rank and the abilities and skills and so on and so forth. It's going to show me their skills in, in, in the left tab here. And I hover over another unit, like up here the flagellants. You're going to see right there what the flagellants have that are better and what it decreases. Flagellants right here shows that they're more powerful in almost every way. They just have less armor and less melee defense. Um, if you can recruit, if you see that if I were to recruit a Spearman unit right now, I'm already recruiting at rank two and this is going to be different depending on who i'm um using in the recruitment tabs you're going to see different ranks across here i should have one that shows a, a completely different oh there we go boom so his rank is three um whatever so anyways that is going to be in effect there and a lot of people don't know that they can do this but if you just click on this little thing right here if you look in the right corner of all of the units there's a little pin if you click on that that allows you to compare right here in the recruitment tab um, so it's not just comparing down here you can compare the units did I not click on something you can compare um, units oh he doesn't have any units that's why it's artillery so let me go to somebody else again bam so if I click on this here I can compare it to my units down here I can compare it to the units down here it's not going to show anything there because this is the one that I clicked on. Um, so comparing units can be very helpful instead of having to go over and try to do the math yourself. Um, that's one main thing to help you pretty much put a, a, a composition better. So remember, the skills, the um, stat buffs it's going to get from the particular lord, the faction effects, the rank. If you can re re recruit 
something that is not usually as stronger as a more elite unit, but it is at a higher rank and it's getting all these buffs, it's usually more beneficial to get that because it's also going to mean it's going to have a cheaper upkeep, which is going to play a bigger role on how much money you're bringing in and how many more stacks you can build. Um, so that's another thing. Obviously, if you look in the right right here, there's going to be little unit skills. These may be skills you may need in the future for any particular battle that you know you may need. So that can take effect too. My also rule of thumb, if you're not bringing in a lot of dough like I am up top here. I'm almost bringing in 20k. Um, try to stay at about 1,000k. You want to keep in about 1,000k because you want to be able to build up your other settlements quick enough so that you can be bringing in the money you need and you know getting the buildings you need to make better um, unit compositions um, faster. Um, don't really um, just press yourself for money trying to get as many stacks as possible because all it takes is one really strong lord with really good units to wreck you um, even though you may have more stacks um, especially if you're playing competitively and especially if you're playing on the higher difficulties um, at the start if you're starting like if it's you, you just started a campaign i usually try to just go to get one full stack right off the bat and then i i take my time and try to build up those beginning settlements um, so that's something I do too another thing you may want to do you go into the Lord um, you may want to compare items a lot of people don't know this like this is a rare item but I only have an uncommon item but if you look at my top left it actually decreases my melee defense now this may have better um, abilities like may give me better you know little things right here physical resistance and income from post and this you know melee resistance and missile resistance so compare those two but sometimes just because something is rare or uncommon to a common doesn't always mean that the item is better and i see a lot of people just click willy-nilly oh i'm just gonna add 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 whatever um and that's not always the best thing to do um so comparing the items is good um, there is actually something that I wanted to show people that I noticed a lot of people don't know that they can do this. So I'm just going to click this unit right here and go to war. Hopefully he doesn't run away. Okay, he doesn't. A lot of people don't know this. In order to apply these banners, you have to click on them and drag them to a unit. A lot of people don't know to do that. Um, so that's something there. Uh, I don't think I want to do that one. Base weapon damage, whatever. Anyways, a lot of people don't know that, and I'm just going to retreat because I just did that for the sake of this. Um, mounts is another thing. To the provinces. Um, going into a unit mount. If I hover over this, his stats drop tremendous, tremendously. But I've been reading that it's only taking in the stats of the particular mount. Um, so someone else has said that well once you add the mount and then you look at your stats it will be the mount stats plus all your other skills and bonuses and buffs and so on and so forth and i've been playing around with that and i think it to be true so far i haven't noticed that like if i were to click this actually i'm going to go right here see so yeah, it pretty much decreases everything it's like i'm at 105 and then this says 85. i click on it but now my guy is still at 105. So, it hasn't seemed to be an issue. Now, I, actually, I think if I go back here, mounts may be changed once per turn. Okay, never mind. So, it did apply immediately. Um, so, I, you know, a lot of people talk about that, and it kind of confused me for a minute, and I just kind of started toying around with it right now and noticing my stats actually don't go down. So, um, there's that. And I've switched over to Dark Elves now here. So if you look at the screen, you're going to be like, wait, this doesn't look like anything two seconds ago. Um, that's because I have the Dark Elves set up a certain way to finish showing you what I want to show you. So I'm going to get into basically now um, which skills to Noble invest in. And this changes if you hover over the unit and you look in the unit card. This says Sword Infantry. I believe I have like a spellcaster somewhere um, that is a lord I might not um, spear and whip whatever so normally what I do when I'm looking at 
the skills. If they have really special skills up here, I'm going to invest in, you know, some of those special skills that are going to help the army and whatever. And those are usually at the very, very tippy top near the mount. But when it comes down to these basic three sections, the ones that increase the attack and defense of the actual lord, the one that, you know, increases certain things of the units, and then one like unit marcher, and then you got um, draft master over here, which is important. Uh, very underrated one, and then there's usually upkeep right here, Quar quartermaster that keeps the upkeep for all the units. It depends on which lord it is. If I, again, if I scroll over here, this is a spear and whip infantry unit. If it's a melee specialist, a sword, axe, whatever, if it's a guy who's going to be on the front lines, that's when I invest in the yellow. If it's going to be a magic user, I'm going to invest in the spells, and you normally have a lot of skills points left over which i believe in warhammer 1 is 30 it maxes out and warhammer 2 is 40 so you got to kind of count a little bit but then i'll go for the red bar because i want my units to be strong enough to protect my lord who is a ranged user he uses magic or he uses you know he uses a um a bow or or you know anything like that um and then i'll, I'll kind of supplement a little bit in the blue and this this is just for those two um, if it's just arranged, obviously he's not going to have magic. There may be some things in the top, up top, that may increase certain things of other archer units, may increase his range or something like that. Then I'll invest in that, and then I'll go back down into the red, into the blue. Um, so that's normally how you want to do that. Um, another thing I see a big issue in competitive play, um, and also with a lot of... Um, people who just are playing on high difficulties and they're running around their uh, stacks are getting wrecked and that's because of two things either a you're raiding too close to an enemy or you're in force march stance now raiding there are some factions that get bonuses and buffs to raiding but most factions don't and if you look at the rating and the force march you're going to see it says rigor vigor i'm sorry vigor in battle tired <clears throat> you don't ever want that if you think going to war with a tired army and you're still going to win, you're wrong. Okay, that's never a smart thing to do. And so I only force march if I have a unit way in the back that I need to bring to my front lines. Or let's say I have an entire continent. Um, you know, like let's say, let's say I own this entire continent right here. Okay, and my unit is here and I need to get him here. Okay, then I'll force march my way up to that point. Okay, other than that, I don't use force march. I don't ever force march near my front lines because a weak stack, a weak 20 stack versus your stack of 20 intricate, um, very um, intense ranked up units can still lose because they're all tired. And it does make a difference, especially in the higher difficulties and especially if you're playing against a person uh, live, okay? So definitely take a, a um, definitely take a, a precaution for doing that. Um, what I like to do on the map, I usually like to take a corner. As you can see, um, Warhammer 2 map sucks. But as you can see, as you can't see, because for some odd reason my thing is going a little wonky here, um, I have this whole area, all this supposed red but it's actually pink so this is my corner i don't have to worry about anybody going behind me obviously i'm playing a vortex campaign immortal empires <clears throat> that would change a little bit but i try to take a corner of a map or i try to get myself to the point where i don't have too many front lines and that's usually a smart thing to you know try to do um obviously you can't always do that um, but you want to take a, a defensive position and when you start a new campaign go through this go through the the diplomatic relations to people around you and just kind of click on them and go over here and if they already have a, a high aversion to you chances are they're already going to be an issue so um you know it might be a good idea to plan ahead that you're gonna probably be at war with this person if i look at another dark elf faction right here you you notice they don't have an aversion to me because they're also dark elves the only thing they're condemning is the fact that i have a treaty with a faction that they're not necessarily on good terms with and um that's about it and great power 
because I have great power. So it's usually best to pay attention to that version early on. And I know a lot of people don't do that, but that might be a good thing because if that's working against you and your, you know, your value is is depleting with them or deteriorating with them, uh, you know, it's only a matter of time before they randomly declare war on you, and then that just gives you another issue. Um, I like to try to focus on one enemy at a time. It's usually the best thing to do. Another thing, and this kind of goes back to treaties, is I don't ever, ever um, get any treaties with anybody outside of non-aggression packs or trade agreements until the late game. If you do that, like let's say I wanted Ready. to um, confederate Hag graph whatever whatever the hags down here um i have a military alliance with them and they also have a, mil a military alliance right here with nagarod that increases their um strength rank which still isn't high to me right now but that will also make it harder for you to confederate a unit um a, a group of people so i also don't get into any defensive in and uh, military alliance with people early on because it puts me in too many other wars and you don't want that just get non-aggression packs that's all you really need get a non-aggression pack because once they break the non-aggression pack then you know this person's going to attack you now if you're playing against a live person they may not do that um but if you know you're playing against a live person you should always be taking precautions to that person anyways because you know they're going to be a little smarter than the uh cpu um so just pay attention to that um, now I actually did a save here that put me in a position to show you something very important with battles. Okay, so I'm done pretty much with everything that I had to do on the campaign map. Now I'm going to give you a couple brief battle techniques that I notice a lot of people don't do. Um, one of them, even competitively, I almost never even see the, you know, even some of the better players they throw and waste a lot of their troops away um, with terrible battle tactics now right here it says valiant defeat but I actually would win this war I'm not gonna play it because that'll be too long I'm just gonna show you a couple things um, but uh, real quick obviously you want to aim for the high ground with that being said you don't want to invest in the walls as you can see this is a defensive battle I'm on the defense so normally you'll see people like with a setup similar to this or they'll the have their host. melee back here and the archers up front i don't do any of this basically what i do well first of all Yay. i just kind of take everybody off the wall um and i will i'm gonna turn my ac off is what i'm gonna do because i'm cold um i would take my archer units and i would put them in the positions necessary so one here warriors. and one here and i'm only doing this not because ready. i want them to rain fire down on people when they Dark come near me I'm, i gotta move this Dealers guy in the middle a little bit death. so it gets both towers but only because i want these towers to trigger my only goal is to have these towers and I don't even aim for the equipment. They're going to get through eventually. It doesn't matter. So just, I aim for the most important thing. So if these guys had artillery, I would aim, which it doesn't seem that they do. I would aim my towers. I'd click on my towers, and I would have my towers direct towards the artillery. That's the most important thing that I want to get out, because if I fight them outside of this, I'm going to have to deal with the artillery. So get that out of the way. I only keep my archers up here till they get close and when they get close i take my archers and i'll pull them back so i'll pull them back here i don't know why it's clicking on everybody i'll pull them back here so that way they're already firing on the wall and this is why because if you have a unit right here and they're coming up the wall as they're coming up the wall they're already fighting your unit but if there's no unit there what happens is they tend to accumulate in that spot they don't just come right on the wall then go straight back down the wall so they're accumulating so as they're accumulating on the wall you're shooting your arrows up there and it's just killing them as they're coming up and they're not doing any damage to you because there's nothing there to do damage to and that's what i do i let them come to the wall i let them come up the wall and then i back up and i just shoot as they come up the wall now as far as the doors go blocking the doors i see a lot of people do this mistake right here yes you can do this, and yes, if you put an archer here, he's going to shoot over them, hopefully, and be hitting the targets in the back. But what is actually smarter to do 
is take a unit here and it take a unit warrior. here and put a inverted wedge formation and this actually has another name for it I'm actually gonna Forces. go over a lot of formations Three. people don't use in Warhammer but they probably should in another video so when they come in if Dark I have shots. an archer here and I have Dark an archer hell. here well more like here because I want them to be able to cover the wall too what happens is when the units come in they're gonna either attack this unit or this unit and this archer you have aim at the unit attacking this unit and this archer attacking the unit attacking this unit why because that will keep their rear flanks from being secure so they're going to start taking heavy penalties and, and and their flanks aren't going to be secure their leadership is going to go down quickly and even if they only come in with one unit Dark you're attacking hells. here Dark with hells. two units right off the bat and boom and sometimes if i have enough units which this you know i'm just using the garrison here so i don't have enough units i normally also have a unit here and sometimes even extra archers and so on and so forth uh, missile units now if I had a 20 stack here plus this garrison and then maybe I might keep some guys on the wall to hold them on the wall while I shoot at them with my archers but I will put them off to the side so Dealers I'll put it here even though I know they're coming up right here and then I'll have my melee unit come over here and attack them so this whole area here where they're all piling up I just have this archer just bombarding them from the back here that's kind of my tactic here and I'm not gonna really go into another map to show you what I'm about to mention in these next little tips um, but number one you if you're ever going you know right on the field there's no defensive battle going on aim for trying to take a hill it's important especially if you have artillery and especially if you have ranged or a corner now in Warhammer 1 and 2 they kind of really dumbed down the defense battles back in the previous total war titles there would be the whole a uh, whole village like i would be able to defend all of that back there and this I, I just have this right here which this is kind of a good one but some of the maps you'll see like it'll be cut off like at this point so i just got this like little front area to defend which is crap or a lot of times um even trying to force them to attack early and stuff like that uh, but there is vigor losses happening if their troops are have to march to you and then come up a hill also if you are in a corner of the map that isn't close to the exit because if they can just run out then they'll run out and you don't want that there are some maps and pretend this is one of those maps where it's not a defensive map you're not on the inside defending this little location here you're actually out here but there is a wall here and then at this point would be the area where your units would flee to if they were trying to run off the map i would position my troops along here because they, a units can't get behind me and then b my units will run to the wall for safety and then recuperate and i can bring them quicker back into the battle um and that's pretty much it for here another thing on the offense let's say i was these guys if i'm marching this unit towards the wall and this is almost destroyed exit if you get to about 85 90 percent damage on on a piece of equipment exit your troops i see people all the time don't do that and maybe you haven't needed to yet but if that piece of equipment gets destroyed before you get to the wall guess what that whole unit is gone so there's that and the last and final detail i want to go with battles if i were to win this playthrough i have three cavalry units I see a lot of people, they'll just go up here and click end battle. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Never. The battle's not done until you can't do anymore. If I have cavalry units, especially if I have cavalry units or very fast units, or I have artillery, I'm going to look at the most important thing, the thing that's going to give me an issue again later on, <clears throat> if they attack or if they run and I choose to chase down their whole stack. So, you know, probably these Wildwood Rangers or whatever, or maybe this cavalry unit. I send my cavalry out to chase them down, and I take as many units out as possible. I'll go for the farthest unit I can catch and move on inward and try to catch as many units as I can before they flee the map. Because this makes the next battle easier, which is going to make the casualties for the next time even lower. Because they're going to get a little vigor back. They're going to get a, a little bit leadership back, whatever. 
you don't want any of that. And when they are, when they do come back, they'll have like, you know, ten units in their unit car. They'll have ten units left. So that's the last thing that I want to mention in these videos. Um, if there's any other questions to anything that I put up here, if there's any questions, if you have any issues at all, feel free to put it down below in the comments and I'll do my homework if I don't already know the answer to. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, this is my very first video, so please like, share, and subscribe. It will do me a lot of justice and maybe I then can afford a better webcam. Um, peace out. Again, Emperor Luku with all your tips, tricks, and strategies for strategy games.